How can we go about in housing really to forge a relationship so that the student learning is occurring outside the classroom but also in the, in the halls? What, should we, what, what are we not doing that we should be doing in the future? I think that the, the biggest um, obstacle to that has been ourselves. Mm. Um, that we see ourselves as educators, and I would argue that, mm. that we are. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's kind of a risky, frustrating uh, conversation to have when the, the notion of education is the domain of faculty. Okay? So what I have tried to help people appreciate is that it's more important that it happens than who does it, mm. or my goodness, who gets credit for it. Uh, the, I think the, 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 probably the hardest but the most important aspect to that in forging that relationship is to make it easier for academic affairs to say yes. And by providing resources that maybe they don't have. Mm. Um, and ideally, letting them believe it was their idea. Yeah. And if you can get, if you can do that, then you're onto something really very, very special. And I, I think that's where um, the role of the the executive director or director of residence life really needs to focus much more of their energy uh, in the future, and that's mm. externally. Mm. Uh, hire hire the staff necessary to run the operation mm. and use the, the leader of that department to be a, a visionary, to be the cheerleader, to understand the needs of your program well enough that, that she or he, uh, with the support of their team, can identify the resources necessary to do that and then go out and get it. And if that means getting academic affairs on board, it means also then, as a consequence, creating the kinds of relationships with the leadership of academic affairs, getting yourself on the kinds of committees that will allow, it, it's kind of a collateral assignment for the, uh, for the director, mm -hmm. where she or he has the opportunity to sit on committees with people who have never had mm -hmm. the residential experience on their radar at all. And you, you spend time listening. And listen, uh, what are their frustrations? What, are, what do they feel our students are are attending too well, what are some of the shortcomings? And then use that information constructively to help define uh, opportunities. Is that well? We have been talking for the longest time about uh, how to bring academic affairs and student affairs together. I happen to be really fortunate on my campus just within the last two years mm -hmm. that our housing operation is now under the provost area. And we, uh, we are now uh, retitled that instead of provost, the chief learning officer. And we are part of that whole learning division now. So I think the greater we get the partnerships on that, uh, you know, the better off we're going to be uh, in the long run with partnering academics with what we do in university housing and residence life. Well, I think we have to show faculty how we can contribute to the mm. academic enterprise. Um, on my campus, if, as we've done renovations, we've created uh, classroom and seminar spaces so that classes could be offered. We've worked with faculty to create various living learning programs, and uh, we were pleased that the National Study of Living Learning Programs picked Florida State out mm. of, as four, of four campuses to visit to look at what we had accomplished. So. Um, we sat at the table with faculty, planned it out, um, showed them how it could benefit them. For example, uh, we have one building where virtually all of the freshman music students could live hmm. if they wanted to, and most of them do. There, uh, is, uh, there are music practice rooms, there's a keyboard classroom, uh, there is a grand piano in the lounge, there's a music ensemble room. So, we have to step to the plate mm -hmm. and help them see how, working together, we can enrich what they do as well as what we do. My experience at Illinois, at the University of Illinois, is the best that I've had mm -hmm. to, um, in that um, realm of our work. Um, our provost's office, our academic partners, really support what we do at, mm -hmm. um, a great deal. Um, 
our living learning communities, for example, at Illinois, have to be initiated by an academic department. Really? And they have to bring resources to the table, mm. and they have to be able to offer some personnel, and they have to um, bring some courses for credit mm. that we can offer in the community. So, um, to me, what we do at Illinois, uh, we don't call it a living learning community unless it's been initiated by an academic partner mm. and the provost signs off and then housing becomes a partner with that academic unit, student affairs becomes a partner with that academic unit. I know in a lot of settings, housing or student affairs has to initiate the living learning. Mm -hmm. At Illinois, it works the other way and we've been successful um, because our academic partners, um, they, they have a stake in, in the success of what we're doing. It's not us going to them trying to get them to play. They come to us and ask us to partner mm -hmm. with them. So it's, it's a nice place to be and I think it's a great model mm -hmm. um, because I think it really then strives to, um, it really affords the opportunity for that integration, real integration of the, the academic and student life components to, to merge, to integrate. How do we contribute to academic success? Mm -hmm. And you know, we're, you know, one of the things you have to be prepared to do in housing is to let your organization evolve. Mm. Um, you need to be kind of paying attention to uh, what the mission, vision of the institution is. It changes over mm -hmm. time. But what I've found incredibly important right now is to begin to look at the RA role, to look at the, we have, we have resident coordinators, but you know, the, the full-time professional staff that are living in, and think about what their purpose is. And as we thought about that and began to wrestle with it and looking at retention for our campus, um, it's very clear that how can they support academic success? What can they do? What are the conversations that we, they, they can have? And we know for that coordinator staff, training them, not so that they're students' academic advisors, mm. but so that they have the same information as academic advisors mm. is incredibly helpful to them so that they have the right conversations. And then, you know, what, what we've looked at is literally scripting mm. those conversations to help them know what they need to say, but not so scripted that it's not um, them having a conversation. Scripted so that there are important things to talk to the student about, to understand mm. how they're doing. And then to convey that through that staff to the resident, resident assistant staff.